This is a golf ball with a honey center. You might be asking, why in tarnation would somebody ruin a perfectly good golf ball? Understandably so. Well, as the title states, way back when, honey used to be used in golf balls. We wanted to find out why they used to be made this way, and then find out just how effective a honey golf ball really is. So I figured out the best way to fill a golf ball with honey and not have it explode. And we compared it against a normal golf ball to see if the proof is in the honey. Our, Our story, story actually, actually begins. begins with a man as famous as Babe Ruth, who completely changed the sport of golf and made a fool of himself to entertain his adoring fans. Oh, I wasn't talking about myself. I'm stuff. A 21-year-old named Walter Hagen is a humble club repairman who also teaches golf lessons in his hometown of Rochester, New York. He decides he wants to try out for a professional baseball team, but a member of the club talks him out of it and instead offers to pay for his entry into the U.S. Open. No, not the tennis tournament, the golf one. With nothing to lose, he goes and plays in the championship and wins, beating Charles Evans Jr. by one point. No, not that Charles Evans Jr. He would then go on to win again in 1919 and get 10 more wins in the PGA Championship and the British Open for a total of 11 major championship wins in 15 years. That's almost as many wins as Tiger Woods. His secret to success was his dedication to tomfoolery. I don't know who Tom Foolery is, but he must have been a good guy. He'd show up in a wrinkled suit to make his opponent think he was out partying all night. Because you wore suits to party back then. Let that sink in. He'd hit his ball all over the course to get under his competition's skin. They'd have no idea what was going on. And to top it all off, during the whole game, he'd be drinking tea out of a scotch glass to give his opponent a false sense of security. So to make a long story short, as one of the most famous golfers in the world, Walter Hagen starts a company and starts selling golf clubs. Then, in 1935, he comes out with a honey-filled golf ball collaborating with the L.A. Young Golf Company. The engineer of the ball said, And as I was spreading the honey over the piping hot waffles, the thought came to me that here was a liquid of unusual elasticity. And says I, right out loud. By Jove, I've got it. Oh boy, I found it. Eureka! Honey was the perfect golf ball filling because it wouldn't dry out or explode like other golf ball centers at the time. It was also uniform in its viscosity and didn't expand or contract with changing temperatures. As an added bonus, it wouldn't make you blind. So that leaves us with a task to try to recreate the honey golf ball for testing because they definitely aren't for sale anywhere on the internet. That's my way of saying I checked eBay and it wasn't on there. I started out by just drilling a hole in a golf ball. I didn't film it the first time, so here's some footage of me doing it the last time. Sorry for the spoilers. Then I poured some US Grade A white 100% raw clover honey into a syringe to make absolutely certain I didn't get honey on the seam where I needed to glue it. And for a quicker path to the bloodstream. Well, you know, it's the thought that counts. Then I used quite possibly the least efficient method of creating a cap to seal it in. Basically, I just sanded down a golf ball until it was the right size, but I forgot to film it. Then I glued it all up using tape to ensure I perfectly lined it up with the rest of the ball while it would dry. Nice. We're here at the golf course. We're minding our golf etiquette. We're gonna test out some, some different golf balls. And, and see how consistent it is over nine holes. Okay, who didn't replace their divots? Seriously. Cord golf ball. Oof. I uh, I think that it broke open. I think it blew up. <laughs> that made a fun noise though. That made it, did you see the honey coming out from yeah. behind it? It was spinning and spinning. It uh, looked like a jet of honey. I found the little cap for the the cord ball. We're about. 30 feet away from the T. One went this far. Which okay. Is pretty decent. That's not bad. That's actually not bad. There's the T. We went about 110 yards from the T. We should leave this here for them to find. I think we should. <laughs> the first attempt was wildly unsuccessful. Well, it sure would be a shame if we paid for nine holes and didn't get our money's worth. Play it where it lies. Play it where it lies. Play it where it lies. <laughs> Then Palmer remembered this guy he saw on YouTube Shorts who puts weird things in golf balls to test them out. I promise we didn't steal this idea from him, we just stole his method. Ta-da! So then I fake plastic welded it. Plastic welder? I hardly know her. 
Listen, I wasn't about to bend 30 key rings into this shape. I figured even if I didn't leave the metal in the plastic, it would still melt and fuse together a little bit. It was worth a shot. Yep, that's uh, that's very much that's gone. a blown up ball. <laughs> that's very much gone. <laughs> well, uh, video's done. <laughs> there is literally honey on my golf club face. Mm -hmm. Still tastes good. Well, it sure would be a shame if we paid for nine holes and didn't get our money's worth. Hey, brother, you off roading, brother? We're off roading, brother. <laughs> I swear my ball was around here somewhere. Okay, fine. I'll buy a plastic welder and do it the real way. Wow, this is definitely the first time I'm seeing this. Ooh, I they included a knife and the pliers they shouldn't have. See, Coney, you have absolutely outdone yourself. Ooh. All right, now I'm just going to do that 40 more times. Now, if this doesn't work, I'm gonna fart and poo. <laughs> okay, to avoid going to the golf course again and paying way too much money to blow up some balls, we set up our patented tarp on a fence. A preliminary test to make sure they survive. Yes. Cord ball. It's arrived. Oh, <laughs> like it was nothing. Half full. I topped that one. Uh-oh. It cracked. Let's hit it again. There it goes. Ah, it's stuck. Full honey. Oh, ah. Uh. It's, uh, it's falling apart. Did I not do the plastic welds deep enough? Whack. Cause that's what, cause you whacked it. At least we figured out which style will survive, but I'm a man of my word. <laughs> I got two Titleist Pro V's from Palmer's golf bag while he wasn't looking, and made sure to put holes in them before he noticed so he couldn't stop me. Those are the really nice golf balls for the uninitiated. It would appear Titleist put a fun Easter egg in these golf balls because they're different colors. They're both Pro V1Xs, so that shouldn't change anything. I made the cap thicker so there's more contact area. I also made it a much tighter fit so it won't come out as easily. And I'm going to be using this JB Clear Weld. If that wasn't enough, I plastic welded them just to be double sure. I didn't film it, so here's some footage of me doing it the first time. Alongside the honey ball, I made a control ball and did the same process of drilling and filling, except the filling was the original filling and some resin. Because it really wouldn't be fair to compare the honey golf ball to a golf ball that hadn't been mangled. Here to go with 24 hour golf. You guys, this is one of the 24 hours and you're not open. Then it was time for the ultimate test. Three golf balls, three fellas, in a random field because we didn't want to pay for the golf course again. We have our specialty golf balls as well as a normal golf ball for control reasons. Palmer has his trusty range, range finder. Christian is here for the MEMS and uh, we're gonna go stand out there. You're two yards away. Oh, good. One eternity later. There it is. Oh, Palmer just yelled out 258. Perfect. I cannot believe we just found that. I know. Oh, there it is. Oh, yes. It didn't explode. This is a good day in honey golf ball history. 222, 222 for the honey ball. Oh, that's coming for us. Here she is, the control 178. 
So the last one, I got a little bit of ground. I think that's why it went quite a bit lower. Okay. The first swing, which was with the regular Pro V ball, and then the second swing were almost identical. They both hit really good. They both flew pretty true, almost right at you. And then as far as the feel, I thought this would feel like a rock being cored out and put honey in it and stuff like that. I didn't really notice and it flew just fine. It didn't all of a sudden just twist off to the right or left. Oh, that one went straight down. Um, that one, once he, it felt like I hit it good, to be honest, like everything was fine. And then it took off and then just died immediately, went straight to the ground. So second hit with the honey, 97 it's, yards. That was a pretty good swing right there. Oh, I lost that. Oh, there it is. Oh, here we are. Good eye, Christian. There she is. Dang, that's far. And, and then this, this one, this did one just did 2.30. Found it. Oh no, it didn't break. Did it? No, it's fine. It had honey coming out of it. Did it? Oh, there's a little crack right on the seam right there. Copper. That one felt dookie. I mean, I, didn't, don't, I don't know if I hit it wrong or anything, but it just felt dookie. I completely lost that. Here she is. Uh-oh, somebody's talking to him. Some spicy drama going on here. I guess that's how they used to be made in the olden days. That is strange. It's really interesting, so. What's your YouTube channel? It's called the Water Jet Channel. That one about 237. Well, it seemed like we got one good hit with each one. We wanted to do more tests, but we don't really have time. And here is how they compare. Shut up. So you can see by the results of our honey golf ball going about 230 meters and our control going about 230 meters. That at least honey and resin are similar, but I think it's pretty safe to assume that it would be just about as good as a modern golf ball if it was created in an actual factory where they do a good job and have a good coating. If you made it to the end of the video, congratulations. You might as well watch another one of our videos. Here's one where we made a really heavy baseball, and here's the one YouTube thinks you should watch.